good afternoon from the European Parliament in Brussels uh, with Udo Voigt, uh, the uh, very brave, courageous and unusual German uh, MEP from the uh, NPD. Uh, myself, Nick Griffin, from the Alliance of Peace and Freedom, as in fact um, we all are here, with the exception of, on my left, uh, Lahoud Lado, who is uh, a coordinator for the Association of Syrian Expatriates here in Belgium, who accompanied us on our recent trip to Syria, which is what we're talking about this afternoon, and Hervé van Lathem, who is the, involved with the, the Nation Party in Belgium, and is also very much involved in the APF, and who really was the, the key man uh, organising this trip in the first place. Thank you very much for getting us there and for getting us back safely. Um, so, um, we've got a limited amount of time. And I'd like to go straight into, we're going to discuss um, I think four or five points that came up in our press conference and elaborate on them somewhat. So Udo, I'd like to start with you, that you were saying to me that some people in Germany had said, well, you know, why do you go to Syria where there's this government repressing and killing its own people? So how do you answer that? Yeah, because first of all, of all, I had to go to Syria to see what really happens. And uh, then, after my visit, I can uh, tell about the situation. Uh, and I compared with the situation in Iraq, in Iraq before the war, because there were a lot of propaganda lies. And I see the same in Syria. For example, everybody is talking in the media about fast bomb, it means barrel bombs. Mm -hmm. And uh, we asked uh, uh, Syrian people, soldiers, officers, generals, and foreign ministers about this problem. And they were laughing and were saying, why should we use uh, such kind uh, of bombs? We have a modern air force, mm -hmm. we have modern weapons. If we want to die, uh, to uh, kill someone, uh, by, by our Air Force, then we have missiles to do this and we don't need uh, such kind of bombs which uh, wound, wounded 100, 150 people, uh, that's propaganda. The next uh, lie uh, is uh, about the chemical weapons. The chemical weapons were one of the reasons uh, to make sanctions against uh, Syria because they told us 1,200 children were killed by gas, by sarin, chlorine or something um, else from gas chambers of Syria. And uh, we asked the same questions and uh, we got real answers uh, because now they don't have chemical weapons, weapons, but after the Soviet Union, Union break together, they had uh, no friends which were uh, responsible for to save Syria uh, against Israel. And so they need a very cheap possibility to produ produce weapons uh, like nuclear weapons. They were not able, but chem chemical weapons, weapons, they were able to do this. But they never, at no times, uh, was bringing this kind of weapon uh, into the war. And uh, then a good question, because where in Syria, in which place of the whole world are living 1,200 children without parents, without uh, uh, elderly people? If they killed 1,200 people by gas, by chemical weapons, then there must be 8,000, 10,000, 12,000 killed in this area, yeah. and that is not true. Yes, indeed. Yeah, sure. Uh, well, certainly there's some very powerful material available uh, online uh, showing uh, children who were uh, kidnapped uh, in Latakia uh, by the rebels and then comparing the pictures of those children with some of those poor children dead in that gas attack and it certainly looks like the same children so logic would indicate that the Syrian government would have been mad to give the Americans the excuse uh, to invade and the actual the only facts you can look at for yourself on the internet actually strongly suggest that this was a crime by the rebels designed yeah. to act as a, a cause of belly, a cause of war for the uh, for the Americans which of course nearly happens. Uh, Lahoud I'd like to come to you uh, on this because obviously this uh, this allegation keeps on coming up what's the absolute latest in this sort of tennis ball tennis match game of accusations about chemical weapons in the use in Syria? 
we see that uh, this theater about the chemical weapons and all other allegation of uh, of using uh, an acceptable uh, wars machine in in, the, in this uh, in this situation in Syria were all lies, and this propaganda is repeating and repeating itself with the same primitive material, which no one can believe, and. We, we can take it very easily by the ambassador of Syria in the United Nations. After each chemical attack, he was addressing an official invitation to, to the members, to a commission to come and visit Syria and see what's exactly happened and who used these chemical weapons. One of these times, uh, the United Nations answered and sent a commission to go and see on the ground what happened exactly. They came one month after. Although it's a chemical attack, they invited them to come and see on the ground what's happening. They came one month after to see what happened. And what they wanted to do, they wanted to go and see another site in Syria. They said, we invited you to come and do an inspection on this site where the chemical weapon were used. You say that it was used by us, go and see who used it. They didn't go there. They wanted to see and visit another visit. So they have, they have a different agenda. That's yeah, very, so very, very what's, clear. What's the American position the now? Situation, the same exactly situation. Like exactly like Iraq. Yeah, Weapons of mass destruction, it's a, a different, different phrase. What's the latest American position on this? Uh, we have uh, seen it yesterday on the television, um, who exactly from the uh, United States government were saying, uh, we think, uh, exactly again, we think that uh, the rebels, they are calling them rebels, although they are terrorists, who were the ones who used the chemical weapons in Syria. So are they changing their position towards who used the chemical weapon in Syria or not? We don't know. Mm -hmm. America is changing its color and its uh, position every day. They are, they are never clear. They have the, the ability to change their position at, at every moment. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the inconvenient situation for Europe that they are following uh, the United States position every time and this is where, it is, where is the ethic in this? Yes. There are a human tragedy taking place in there and an action should be taken in order to stop this. And so, if the United States wants to stop this, a, a, with uh, Europe they can stop this situation and war in Syria in 48 hours, but they are not willing to stop it. They want this war continuing, continue, and never having an, a stable area. And this limit of the, of the Wahhabi ideas and ideology which is going to Europe Slowly, slowly. Indeed. We'll come on to that shortly. They have to change the position because we were there <laughs> and we saw, we saw the truth. <laughs> indeed, <laughs> indeed so. Heve, you've been to um, Syria, I think, three times yes. over a number of years. Uh, so with that experience in mind, what sort of overall feeling do you have about the, the propaganda of the West uh, and what kind of material do the Syrians show uh, to, to show a different picture? But, like you say, uh, that it, it is uh, for Iraq, for uh, Libya, it's always the same propaganda for Western countries. Uh, they use uh, uh, the weapons of mass destruction. They speak about uh, civilian uh, killing, about uh, children who are uh, killing, about oppression. But uh, the, the problem is that the really oppression, the really terrorists, there are people from ISIS, but not just from ISIS. There is another rebel groups, terrorist groups. They are from Al Nusra and another groups, uh, and they are the really terrorists. Um, so when we went in Syria, they uh, let us see um, evidence about the fact that there is an international terrorist army who is today in Syria. Uh, they uh, give us uh, this, this video and another evidence. And on this video, there is uh, some flags about all the countries who came the terrorists in Syria. It's now uh, from uh, Albany, uh, United States, Turkey, Spain, mm -hmm. Germany, France, and so on and so on. And, of course, of Saudi Arabia. Uh, this is an international army, a terrorist international army, who is today in Syria, but tomorrow will come in yes. Europe. I think that's, that's a really important point, you know, that this, this isn't a problem, and people again might ask, well, why are uh, a nationalist politicians from, from Europe bothering about Syria and going there? Well, it's partly because it's the right thing to do, because this is such a monstrous war, but also there's a direct self-interest for every single person in Europe, because if these crazy rebels win in Syria, it doesn't stop there, they'll also They've said they're going to attack Western Europe, 
and clearly they will. What's very briefly sort of what's the the German public's understanding now uh, of how many uh, German Wahhabi crazies are fighting in Syria and the chances of them coming back to to, to attack people in Germany? Yes, um, the German media say about uh, two thousand foreign fighters are in Syria or ready to go to Syria from Germany and I think this would be a big problem for Germany too because they're coming back. Yeah. They're not all killed or wounded but they are coming back and they're living in our society and we know uh, hundreds thousands of uh, refugees came year by year to Germany, a million to Europe this year and uh, there are thousands of terrorists coming as refugees. And uh, now they start to destroy every histo each historical thing in uh, Syria. And uh, if Syria can't stop the terrorism, the war, the terrorism will come to Europe. And they are able not only to destroy pyramids or other historical uh, countries or cities, they are able to destroy Venice, they are able yeah. to destroy the Vatican, they are able to destroy the Dome of Cologne. Yeah, indeed. Now, um, and again, some people just watching Western media reports will tend to think that in Syria this is one bunch of Muslims against another bunch of Muslims. And in fact, as we found ourselves when you go there, uh, it's amazing the vibrancy of Christian life in Damascus when, as you know, we was walking through the streets of the old city yeah. and came across, purely by chance, three different lovely weddings, Christian weddings there. Quite remarkable uh, you know, to me. But um, you're a Christian yourself from a, a Christian family. Yes. So what can you tell us about the, the, the real views of real Christians in Syria and now in the diaspora about what's happening and what should happen? So... They have different views about, firstly, the situation in Syria itself, the situation of the, of the organized immigration, if I can call it like this, how they are trying mm -hmm. to export between brackets the Christians from Syria and remove them from this own land and country to Europe or other countries. And also, the point of view of the Syrian population towards the European population. Mm -hmm. Abstraction done to the governments, because they arrive to a position that they are uh, having a hopeless point of view of the governments because they are not doing anything. If after four years and a half, five years that the European governments didn't do anything, they will not do anything now. Mm -hmm. So they count on the European population to, to change the public opinion about this war. It's enough. It's now, it's 250,000 dead in this war. It's the biggest drama after the Second World War. How can the European population not think about the situation and start moving, addressing their words to their governments? What is this happening in there? What is this silent? What is this inaction toward yeah. this situation? The Syrian population there, they said, don't convince me that Europe cannot do anything. Although Europe is prisoner of the United States decision, although Europe is not doing anything expressly. Why? Why do they want to destroy this area. This was the cradle of civilization. It was a place where all religion lived together peacefully. Why is this in action? We won't leave Syria. We don't want to leave Syria. We are staying here. Help us to stay here. Don't open your doors to moving the Christians from Syria. You won't, we, are, we are living here. We have already lived here peacefully. Mm -hmm. We want to stay here. Help us to stay here and we are not going away. Yes. Can, I and, bring, can I just bring Dudo yeah. in on this point? Because one of the things that um, I think two different uh, groups of the Syrian leaders said to us was tell people back home, uh, don't open the doors, close the doors, help us to stay in Syria. And they, they picked out Germany as, as a culprit in what they see as a wrong, a wrong policy. Very briefly, what is Germany's current position on uh, immigration from Syria that's, that's angering Syrian Christians? That's a big problem in Germany because the government made special rules for Christian refugees and uh, they said everybody should come, we open the doors, so it's an open you, door. are, you are welcome here in Germany. And uh, the Christians, the leader of the Christians in Damascus, they said, please stop to do this, the home country of Jesus Christ is here and we have as Christians to stay in the homeland and not to leave our land. Yeah, and that, you know, back to, uh, uh, Lahoud, back to you. So that's not propaganda from a, a small number of people. 
that's, you would say, a, a genuinely held conviction of large numbers of Syrian Christians that they, they want to stay in Syria and the help they want from the West is to stay there and for their government to beat these terrorists. Yeah, of course. Uh, the, the minimum thing that we keep uh, Christians to stay in Syria because it's there where Christianism started, everything has started. Yeah. And fighting the terrorism is a key point to bring stability back to the secular Syria yeah. that we know all together. Yeah. And that's a key message that they wanted to, to, to give to Europe. One uh, eyewitness I met in Damascus and he said, we saw in our naked eyes the trucks and sea turns of petrol going to Turkey. Turkey is a member of the NATO. And this is, the history will not tolerate this. Yeah. We are accusing you to finance the terrorism in Syria. This is something that we're seeing. How, wh how can this happen? Is the NATO or Europe not seeing all these trucks and all this uh, transportation of petrol uh, going to Turkey? Yeah. And uh, beside that, there is uh, a natural catastrophe which is taking place because these terrorists are processing the petrol on site and they are doing this in a very primitive mm -hmm. way, which is causing a lot of complication in the environment and so on. So the situation is really very bad and the action is really needed in a very urgent way. We have to, to raise the awareness about the situation more and more. What we see in the, in the Europe media is totally something else. They are taking part of, of, uh, of the media information on one side and saying, okay, the government is attacking its own population and it's killing its own population. This propaganda, we have seen it everywhere, mm. in Iraq, mm. in Libya, everywhere, yeah. and how they are trying to export the democracy to this land. The, the model, the European model or the United States model of the democracy, we cannot apply it in these countries. It's going in steps mm -hmm. and not imposing it in this way. Seeing, having blood on the earth, it's something really very bad and this has to stop. And yeah. the awareness of the European population needs to be increased on this. Yes. That's a key message. Certainly, um, if you were going to be kind to European governments, you could say about things such as the, the ISIS petrol supply through Turkey, you could say they're, they're just turning a blind eye to it. But that's being too kind, it's not true. They're doing far more than turning a blind eye to this terrorism. They're actively helping it in various ways. Propaganda uh, and their allies such as Saudi Arabia, Turkey and Israel, all of them in the different ways, contributing to this ghastly war against Syria. Uh, and uh, clearly the view of uh, America, Britain and other European countries is exactly the same as it was in the Afghan war in the last days of the Soviet Union. But they think that they can use this terrorism to overthrow a government that they don't like uh, for various reasons we haven't got time to go into now uh, and that it won't come back and bite them. And really they should think back to 9-11 to uh, and the problems that arose. They created the, um, uh, the Al-Qaeda monster and they thought they could control it and once its job was done, they could put it to sleep. Yeah. It doesn't yeah, work like that so and it's a huge threat. Every time they, they, they were somewhere, a terrorism organization was born. In Afghanistan, when they went there, okay, we saw that the Al-Qaeda was born. They went in Iraq, abstraction done to the fact that they have destroyed the country. Yeah. We have seen the ISIS <coughs> born in there. Everywhere they are going, there is a terrorist organization which was born behind them. There is a plan everywhere that they go to destroy and destabilize this area so that they keep the machine yeah. war turning Indeed. on. Yeah, sure. So to wrap, begin to wrap this up now, one last subject we said we'd like to talk about, and that's sanctions. Uh, now, Heve, you I know were actually involved at the time of the, the Iraq war. We mentioned this before uh, as one of the human shields there trying to stop. The, what we said to the West and the Americans then, who do I know the MPD did, the British National Party did in Britain, we, or we all of us said, don't do this, it'll open the doors to terrorism. They said, oh no, it'll be fine, we'll have peace and democracy in Iraq within six weeks. And of course they had appalling chaos, but you were there at the time, so you've, I'm sure, watched and knew more about sanctions and the impact of sanctions on Iraq. Having been back to Syria recently, what are your views on the sanctions that the West imposes only on the Syrian government side, while ISIS has no sanctions at all. It's always the same. It's always the civilians who support the, who, who are the victims of the sanctions. So, if uh, a Syrian citizen wants to go back to, to his country, it's very difficult because there is no more uh, airline, uh, there is no more uh, 
uh, fly to direct to, mm -hmm. to Damascus. Uh, there is a problem uh, too for the medicine, for the for all the problem of to to the children. It's always the civilians who are the victims, and it's the goal of the Western government. They hope that the Syrian people are going to say, okay, no, it's enough, and we want to change of government. And that's, I think, it's a, an evidence that the Syrian people are supporting the government. Because after four years of so a war, after four years of sanctions, if the Syrian people was not uh, for the Syrian government, it's a long time that it will be a, a, a new uh, regime. Yes. It's not the case. So, but it's always the same. They target the civilians. And uh, it's, uh, I think that it's a crime against humanity. It was a crime against humanity in Iraq, and it's uh, yes. uh, a crime yeah. against humanity in Syria. Yeah, I, I certainly thought yeah. when, we, when we were shown around the, um, the, the hospital uh, there the other week, uh, yeah. and there's several pieces of high-tech equipment, CAT scans and so on, lying idle because they're not allowed to export to import spare parts. That is very cle simple. Clearly a crime. We saw that little, little lad of 15, 16, terribly injured and so on. It's true. It's not just just soldiers who can't get treated and even if uh, a government objects to another government's wars what on earth is the moral justification for saying that an injured soldier can't get the best treatment possible uh, surely against the geneva convention but also that these machines aren't just used for soldiers they're used for civilians so they're not being used now uh, and anyway what was the the last figure reliable figure that you saw of the deaths caused to children in iraq by Western sanctions. I know it's enormous. What, what is it? Yes. First was that they, uh, if a child has to go to the hospital, they can uh, make a, a surgical operation. They can. There was no more the material to make this. Mm -hmm. I saw children, there was two years in hospital. So it was two years in hospital in, in, to, to, to wait about a surgical operation. Because the United Nations say that uh, uh, surgical material could be a danger. It's, it was, it was yeah. amazing, it was a crime. Yes. Yep. Hundreds of thousands of yes, victims, yes, you're talking. Yes, yes. Uh, so the population of Syria is smaller, I think, than the population of Iraq. Yeah. But you're still talking an enormous humanitarian catastrophe for, for ordinary Syrian people, just as a way of punishing their government. Is that how the people see it? They, okay, they are addressing the, the punishment towards the members of the government, but who is suffering of this? Member of governments, they are they are living a good life. Mm -hmm. So they say that by themselves, they are prohibited to enter the Europe. Okay, oh dear. whatever. <laughs> okay, we'll not go to Europe. It's not a big problem. The Syrian population is suffering of that. Previously, I was going to Syria. It cost me a certain amount to arrive to my city. Now it, it cost three to four times to go to into Syria. Who is paying this? I am paying this, not the Syrian government. What is the where is the sense of? Probating a medical instrument. We have seen this in our own eyes. A Siemens machine, a Toshiba machine. We cannot import, we cannot buy, not import yeah. even. We cannot mm -hmm. buy a material to repair. Anything to repair the medical instrument. Where is the sense of this? Who is yeah. suffering of this? The, the minister or Syrian government? No. Mm -hmm. The objective, the principal objective of these sanctions against uh, Syria is that they want to to raise the population against the government. Yeah. But they don't realize that it, it's having a boomerang effect. How more you do pressure on the on the city population, how more they are getting more solidar yeah. with their governments. It's a question of uh, unity with the with their national leader. They know with whom they have to be. Yeah. It's although the secular government, although ISIS, and they made their choice and yeah. they will stick to that and they will not change. Yeah. So continuing these sanctions against the population will not change the opinion of the population. These sanctions should stop. It is affecting the Syrian population. They have nothing, they cannot, they cannot buy anything from the, from, from the foreign countries. Mm -hmm. And if they want to buy, if they think they want to buy and they can buy anything, they don't have foreign currency to buy it. Mm -hmm. So. It's a big issue, these sanctions on, yeah. on the Syrian population. And well, this needs to be well known that these sanctions are against the Syrian population and the children in hospital who are suffering of this. Yeah, all indeed, population. Indeed. So, time to wrap up now. Uh, we just need to say one thing about sanctions because we're saying here that sanctions against Syria are clearly unjust, wrong, and a crime against humanity. But uh, various uh, uh, 
partners of the Alliance for Peace and Freedom over the next few weeks are going to be holding demonstrations calling for, for sanctions against the real criminal in this, which is the state of Saudi Arabia, where Saudi Arabia is the, the main uh, funder of terrorism and supplier of weapons to ISIS and Al-Qaeda in Iraq and Syria, and bear in mind they've taken a part of Lebanon and so, so on, so it's a, a widespread problem. They're also, for us as Europeans, very important. Uh, they're the key uh, exporter of the ideology that underpins terrorism, this Wahhabi fanaticism, uh, and thereby they're the ones who are building up the future civil war in European states and capital cities. Um, and of course, uh, on the ground right now, there's, or rather in the air right now, there's uh, uh, Saudi Arabian warplanes bombing Yemen, bombing civilians in Yemen, not killing their own people, but killing other people, uh, completely in breach of international law, uh, and in fact acting as the, the air force of Al-Qaeda, because they're bombing the Houthi rebels who are fighting, the only people fighting Al-Qaeda on the ground, an incredibly complex but stupid situation. So, Udo, very briefly, what the difference between the sanctions which are unjustly imposed on Syria and the kind of sanctions that we're proposing against Saudi Arabia? Um, I think uh, there can't be a difference because there are no sanctions against Saudi Arabia. Uh, but um, anyway, I am a member of this parliament, end of the year we will make an exhibi exhibition here in the parliament to uh, show visual what happens there with a lot of pictures and we are trying to make more interviews about the situation, mm -hmm. the real situation in Syria because the people here in the parliament, if they decide to, more, to make more sanctions, they should know how it affects unwanted soldiers how it affects yeah. on normal people, how it affects on babies and children, and uh, then they can say we want to make more sanctions. Yeah. It helps ISIS, but not the people in Syria. Yeah, I think there's a, a, there, there's a clear difference of sanctions that you can bring in. So, do you want to yeah. say a word on this? So, yeah. I want to say that we ask sanctions against, against Saudi Arabia, but against authorities, not against the yeah. civilians. Exactly. We want to stop the uh, diplomatic relations between the European Union and Saudi Arabia. We want uh, to freeze the financial assessment uh, here in Europe. We want to, uh, uh, to force the, Syria, the Saudi Air Force to stop to bombing uh, Yemen. That's the kind of sanction. We don't ask that the uh, children in Saudi uh, have no more medicine. Mm -hmm. We yeah. ask uh, sanctions against the authority, political and financial section, uh, sanctions against the government of Saudi Arabia. Yes. That's the difference. A absolutely so. In keeping with the uh, various uh, United Nations resolutions, which clearly make it illegal or wrong for states to fund and fi finance terrorism uh, or to allow their citizens to do so. And at the very least, Saudi Arabia is deliberately turning a blind eye to very rich Saudi Arabians, Qatar doing the same to an extent yeah. as well, uh, so that they channel funds to ISIS and Al-Qaeda uh, and you know, with, the, with the appalling consequences that, that result. Uh, and from the point of view of, of Western countries, again, our people might think this is a long way away. It's not a long way away when the Saudis or Qatari sovereign wealth funds buy up airports or buy up the port of Dover uh, and take control, of, particularly of key transport uh, installations throughout Western Europe. Because if you control a port, if you control an airport, uh, then you can let people in that you want to. Extraordinarily dangerous long term. So I think to conclude that it's very clearly in the interests of the European people to stop the sanctions against Saudi Arabia, which are hurting the people fighting ISIS terrorism, and to bring in sanctions against the state and the financial institutions of these huge uh, Wahhabi petrostates, uh, which are threatening not just Syria, not just civilized people in the Middle East, but also here. So to finish off there, thanks to Udo, Lahoud and Hervé. Thanks to you for watching. I'll just show you a poster here. This is going to be shown uh, in various translations. There's going to be a demonstration in Paris, a demonstration in Rome coming up very soon, others as well. Sanctions now. Saudi Arabia funds ISIS terror. We have here the King of Saudi Arabia, the godfather of terror, by the Alliance for Peace and Freedom, the only people telling it like it is, the only people going to see with their own eyes and telling you what we've seen, telling you the truth. Thank you for watching.